Hi, everybody. Bob Schwartz here, the executive director of ASEP, and I am pleased to be talking with Dr. Bill Bankston. Uh, Bill is the president for the, so the Society for Scientific Exploration. He's uh, one of the leading researchers in energy healing. He's the author of The uh, Energy Cure. How you doing, Bill? And he's, of course, going to be doing a keynote for us at the, uh, at the conference. Doing fine, Bob. Thanks. Uh, looking forward to this. So, the, as I recall, the title of, the con of your keynote has to do with the scalability of, um, of energy healing, which is an interesting idea. Maybe you could tell folks a little bit about what scalability, what, what you're talking about, because you have a little different take on it than some folks. Well, I, I think I, my talk is going to have two parts to it, I think. One will be a, um, a, a discussion on moving to more interesting questions about healing. So as you know, in, in ASAP and all sorts of other societies and various academic centers, people have been looking into healing in a systematic way since the great work of Bernard Grad in the 50s and 60s. And, and so there have been a gazillion studies, that's an actual number, a gazillion studies on healing. Um, I, I, I think it's time to move past questions about does healing work? Uh, is there such a thing as healing and all that? And start to get into second order questions of, that are, have tremendous clinical importance. For example, dose response and measurement of what happens under this conditions of a dose, that conditions, is it additive, things like that. And so there's a whole bunch of questions I'm going to suggest uh, uh, become uh, pretty interesting once you've established beyond reasonable doubt that healing is real. And healing being real doesn't mean everything works and it doesn't make any difference, but, but I'd also like to encourage people to start looking into comparative healing. So, uh, you know, some folks may or may not know, we featured you, well, we featured you in the Science of Energy Healing. I talk about your work all the time, but for those that don't know, I mean, you're, you've done these amazing studies where you've use this uh, you know, healing method, now known as the Bankston method, uh, on uh, curing cancer in mice, repeatedly multiple studies again and again and again. Boatload uh, of them. Huh? A boatload of them. A boatload of them. I mean, yeah. And you can teach other folks. It's pretty amazing stuff. It's with, it's with mice. It, nothing comes close to, to the stuff that you do. It demonstrates at least that it's possible. Um, but the thing that you're really kind of interested in, and I, I think you're going to talk about, is that not only is it possible, but one of the findings you said that always blows my mind is that you, you can cure a mouse, that's cool, with hands and ear healing, yeah. and then you take the blood of that mouse, give it to another mouse, yeah. and that and mouse it, gets cured. And that will get cured. So it, it would appear to me that there's biological memory. Uh, and one of the things about healing, I think, is that something stimulated in the healy, and in my case, I'm dealing with mice and cell cultures, but I have a, a few hundred cases that I can draw on with humans. Uh, but something is stimulated, and, and among the phenomena is that once we cure a mouse of cancer, it's cured for life. Uh, and it's past cured for life, even if we re-inject it for its entire lifespan, it can't get cancer again. And even that's not enough. We can take a mouse that's been cured and siphon some blood out of it, put it into another mouse, and it'll cure that mouse without any other healing. And, and, and I can keep going with stuff like that. And, and so something biological is going on. I think I have sufficient um, information at this point and sufficient evidence that, I, that I'm, I'm reasonably confident I could make something that would be analogous to a cancer vaccine. Uh, so that, that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is I'd never be allowed to use it. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that's the reality. So uh, what does that mean? Well, I mean, I can I can I can make something that, that can be passed on and, and will cure stuff of cancer and, and do it without any intervention on a healer's part once the system has been started. So when you ask me the question about scalability, that's, if, that's scalability. That's scalability. So I get, uh, well, exhibit A. So this is my little serum thing. I'm making that up. And then I take it from this. I give it to someone. And I can make more serum. I can make more serum. I can make, I mean, in effect, that, that becomes an analog to a vaccine. Um, I, I don't know whether the vaccine would be preventative, but I'm reasonably confident that it would cure a condition that's already there. Um, and, and so I, that would be an example of biological scalability instead of going around 
mouse cage, mouse cage, cage. mouse cage, sure. or person, 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 let's do the whole freaking thing. Um, well, okay, so now I'm going to have to ask um, if one could demonstrate, I mean, you've demonstrated up to a point with mice, but if yeah. you could demonstrate this a little bit further, yeah. that there were no negative adverse effects, right? why, I mean, other than the usual, there's no money in it, really, you really think there's, there'd just be no, there'd be no interest in, in, in curing cancer? I mean, no, no, I mean, the, the, uh, well, mine, mine would be uh, particularly harmful, <laughs> not, not, to, not to an organism, but, I mean, if we can make a self-sustaining vaccine, it'll work. Uh -huh. And it simply seeds itself forward. Um, you know, you, you've got an economic problem if, you, if you're part of uh, an industry. And so mine would be pretty destructive to an industry. And, and, and as, as you, I'm sure you know, uh, all things are not, don't come down to data and whether something works. Uh -huh. uh, things go into power plays and, and, and things like that. So you guys in ASAP trying to get across a particular modality, I'm sure you're- you, well, We have enough problems as it is. That you've had one or two fights, more. you know, by the, I'm gonna make this up, but I'll bet you've had the fight with the American Psychological Association, with the American, you know, the cool. da 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 da. And so they're gonna, they're gonna come after you, you're playing in my sandbox. You yeah. know, so some crazy schmuck who's a, you know, rodent fondler comes along and comes up with a way to, to make a, a seat, something seated going forward. Yeah. Um, that's going to need FDA approval, and the FDA is going to go, what? <laughs> now, that doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means try to get that through the FDA. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think within our lifetimes, you know, so maybe someone in here will have a grandchild and then something will get through them. Uh, but I don't think it's likely to go through real quick now. So I'm going. So what I'm do we do then? That's a little depressing thought. We can't leave the folks with that. Tell. <laughs> well, I, I I mean one of the things I can show them is how to do it themselves. You know, so that's not depressing. Uh, yeah, that's and, then, true. and then they can go out and get harassed for it. But um, the the I'm I'm looking for a plan B. So I'm 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 reasonably persistent. I'm also nasty. Um, and so I, I, I don't give up, you know. So my, my current work right now is we, we know that biology has memory, but here's an example. I'll go back to my, my glass of water here. Can I treat the water? And does the water have the memory of the treatment? Mm -hmm. Now, if the water has the memory of the treatment, let's go to the next step. And the water can charge other water, it becomes scalable. Right. And so that would be an example of a, is there memory in a physical system? And I'm doing experiments now that are, I mean, frankly, they're mind boggling. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be you know, humble here, but the, the, the data that are coming in and they're going on as we speak. So I won't even, I don't know now all the data that I'll have when I come to you folks in San Antonio and they'll be you're stuff. gonna have good data. We don't. Want, this is we're gonna tantalize everybody. There'll be stuff have that's outrageously cool data. They'll be, oh, it's way past that. So it, it's gonna. Be, I mean, it's already way past that. And right now, I got at, at, in Providence. I got immunology studies going on, and inflammation studies going on, and a whole bunch of things going on. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff going on. But among the things that we've we've discovered, and I think discover is is reasonably good. That if we hold a piece of cotton and we charge that cotton, but a charge is just a generic word, and we put cells in need near that cotton, we get very dramatic biological effects. If the cells aren't in need, we don't get any effects. Cells in need can be, for example, a bunch of cancer cells. If we put the charged cotton near the cancer cells, the cancer. Now, 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 let's hold up because I know I think I know. So people are going to go, well, if it's cancer, they're going to go, well, that cancer is bad, so it's going to die. No, no, no. I'm going to do that. There, there are. Uh, that's a, that's different data. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm trying to, I'm trying that's, to get people. That's growth. Those are growth studies. We're doing genomics right now. Okay. And and so what happens when you put the cancer near a charged cotton is the cancer changes genomically. In other words. 
<clears throat> some genes are upregulated, some genes are downregulated. I mean, that, that's reasonably interesting too. That is. And, and so- Nothing should happen. Nothing should happen at all. It's just a freaking piece of cotton. Give me a break. Right. Yes. So you're, you're putting, you put whatever you want to call it, a healing intention. I think the more technical term would be hocus pocus. I don't know what it would be. <laughs> you put hocus pocus into the cotton and it remembers or it has the potential and it produces changes in cells. Genomically, I mean, and, and repeatably and all that kind of stuff. Right. <clears throat> now, we can take that and more stuff that I'm going to be talking about, but I'm not going to give away the store here is we can also take this stuff, potentiate other materials. We can get genomic changes, and we also get genomic changes in the physical space of the incubator. So that, well, I'll just leave it like that. Right, so I'm gonna be talking That's about- some, amazing. I'm gonna be talking about some of my data, but the, the general idea will be this. Have we captured in a physical system, healing intention, and can we play that physical system back to cells and produce the same thing as if we were doing it live? Right. And the answer seems to be very likely. Hmm. Well, that's pretty amazing stuff, you know. So we have a recording yeah. that will produce these changes, and among the things I'm gonna do, if you'll give me the time, is I'm going to play this to your group, Ooh. and they'll experience whatever this is. I see. Well, you have to play it. So, <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, so basically, for those of you who have never seen, <laughs> I mean, you really are the really. I have to say, the preeminent person who stretches, who who blows minds. Um, you come up. You have this amazing way of thinking about things, and I'm I'm realizing now that really, instead of propagating the healing. Like, you know, like you were talking about, you need to propagate you. No, we need to you know, capture because, it. You know, because the thinking, <laughs> we need to get this thinking. With, with, we had a hundred of you people like you, thinking like you, uh, I think we'd be a lot, we'd be further along because you definitely have a different way of, of kind of approaching it. And so one of the things I think people will get when they come is, among other things, is you do have this unusual way and it's, as you start to kind of tune into it, it, it's, it opens up some doors and your, your research is just, it is mind-boggling, I gotta say. It really is, I have to say that too, because I, I I'm not a believer. I know you're not, you know, this is actually, you know, you're actually be almost becoming a believer in your stuff. No, you're but totally, I got, data, you're like totally the, nothing, but now you're like, hey, this stuff's really good. I'm yeah, I, still, I still don't believe it, but it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we may have captured, we're not sure, but we may have captured and we did some very, very, very high-end sophisticated stuff that I can explain. Uh, and we had 38 detectors in a Faraday cage. Did we capture X? Because I don't know if it's a signal. I got folks trying to, to untangle whatever it is we captured, and it doesn't conform to normal electromagnetic signals. So we'll be playing around, and I won't be giving you anything final in San Antonio. Right. I'm just going to be talking about some latest stuff. Where you are now. There Where I am now. And I hope by the end of the summer, I'll be someplace else. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Bill. Thanks so much. And, um, um, and you're actually also going to be giving a, a second talk at the research day. Yeah. So if people want to come to you, they can see a research day. They can see you on, uh, on, during the main conference. And um, uh, we hope everybody will come see us in San Antonio. Should be fun. See you later, folks. Bye.